Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to be talking about Mad City, which is a beat-em-up game released by Konami for the Famicom back in 1988. Some of you guys who may not be familiar with Mad City may be saying to yourself, wait a minute, I know this game, it's Bayou Billy, right? And you would be correct. The game was released outside of Japan the following year in 89 with a name change to The Adventures of Bayou Billy, but that wasn't all that was changed. There are some pretty colossal differences between the original version of the game and the one that we ended up getting in 1989, and we will go into a little bit of that later on. Mad City is the story of Billy West, a crocodile Dundee lookalike who's on a mission to save his kidnapped girlfriend Annabelle from the clutches of the evil godfather Gordon. There's quite a bit to Mad City that separates it from a lot of the other beat-em-up games out there. The game is divided up into a total of 10 stages, which range from good old-fashioned street fighting to driving and even some shooting gallery type stages along the way. The beat-em-up segments are pretty straightforward. You'll be kicking the crap out of anyone or anything that gets in your way and picking up some items here and there. These include turkeys, which can refill your life bar, and you'll find a few bulletproof vests, which will end up making Billy impervious to enemy gunfire. The combat itself works quite well, with Billy being able to punch, kick, and jump kick when both the A and B buttons are pressed together. Each attack is fairly effective, but the jump kick does a bit more damage than the standard punch and kick attacks. Mad City is also one of those games where you want to use the plane to your advantage by moving up and down in order to sneak in some extra hits on attacking enemies. As far as the weapons, Billy can use sticks, whips, knives, and of course his pistol once you get a hold of some bullets. The most efficient weapon, in my opinion, is the whip. It makes the fighting segments a heck of a lot easier and allows Billy to attack from a safe distance. If you manage to pick one up, try to hold on to it for the entire level if you can. The shooting stages put you into a first-person auto-scrolling view while you attempt to take out as many bad guys as you can. You do have a limited number of bullets, but certain enemies will drop more supplies when killed. These can be more bullets, health, and even a star that'll clear out all the bad guys on the screen when it's picked up. The goal here is just to survive the countless waves of henchmen and make your way to the end. As I had mentioned before, there are even a couple of driving levels during the game. These mainly consist of navigating Billy's Jeep through various obstacles and enemies while trying to reach the end of the course before the time limit runs out. Luckily, Billy can fire from the Jeep and even throw dynamite out the window at oncoming enemies. Another really cool feature in Mad City are the multiple endings. Depending on how you react at the end of the game, the ending changes. For example, if you do run up to Annabelle after rescuing her, her and Billy will hug and the credits will roll. If you purposely avoid her while she tries to chase you down, Billy will end up leaving her in the ending, which I always thought was a hilarious touch. The graphics in Mad City are excellent for a game that was released in 88, and considering that it's representing three separate gameplay styles in one game, it does an awesome job of keeping it all cohesive. There's a pretty big variety of enemies, and the levels all have nicely detailed backgrounds. This is a Konami game, so of course the sound effects and music are great, as you would expect. The soundtrack is rockin' and it fits the game wonderfully. It's all really catchy, and I especially like the music that plays at the end credits. All in all, Mad City is a terrific game. Bayou Billy is not. Our version was completely ruined for some reason. The difficulty borders on almost unplayable, the separate endings were removed, a lot of the artwork and stage layouts were changed around, and a bunch of really cheesy voice samples were added in. The Adventures of Bayou Billy! It's a shame, really, especially when you look at the awesome game that it came from. 
To put it in perspective a bit, I would say that Mad City is easily one of my favorite Famicom games of all time, but I wouldn't even put Bayou Billy in my top 100. I just don't understand how anyone can botch an international release to the extent that Konami did in 1989. If you have a Famicom or even a converter or system that can play the games, pick up Mad City. Don't let our horrible version sway you in any way from getting a hold of one of Konami's best games of the 8-bit era. As always, guys, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching and subscribing, and until next time, stay classic.